Hi all, and welcome to your first steps in learning how to begin programming in Python. Today, we're going to be talking about how to install the necessary components that you're going to need in order to begin your programming. In order to program, you need two things, an editor and an interpreter. An editor is simply a program that allows you to write text, for example, Microsoft Word. But there are other, better editors that are more designed for programming. Some examples of these might be Sublime, Emacs, Vim, Gedit, and Notepad++. The other thing that you need is the interpreter, which is going to take our text instructions that we're going to be writing in the editor and translating them into machine instructions that the computer actually understands and knows how to execute. Both of these can be found at python.org. And we want to make sure to get the 3.6.2 version. So we're going to head over here to python.org under the download section, and then we want to download Python 3.6.2. If you're not running Windows, you can see that there are links here for other operating systems. For example, if you want for Mac, click on here, and then again, install the 3.6.2 version. After you've gone and installed or downloaded the Python 3.6.2, you're going to need to run the installer. So go ahead and do that. And make sure that when you install it, you make sure to click this option right here to add Python 3.6 to your path. And then go ahead and click Install Now. Let it do its thing. And after it finishes, you're going to have everything you need to actually start programming. Now, while an, ID, an editor and an interpreter are the bare minimum that you need to get started, another thing that's going to make your life a lot easier is an IDE. An IDE is an integrated development environment, and it's a collection of commonly used programming tools and assistive features that are going to make programming a lot easier for it to, a lot easier for you. These are things like your code completion, error checking, style formatting, and debugging. Again, save so much time if you start using these. There are many IDEs out there, and all of them have their own proponents, but the one that we're going to focus on for this class is how to use PyCharm, and it's created by the folks over at JetBrains. But if you already have a favorite IDE or favorite editor that you've been using, continue to use those because really what tools you use are really which ones you like the best. In order to install PyCharm, if you're a student, we want to go to jetbrains.com student. And once you're here, you're going to give in this option here to apply now to download all of JetBrains products to get access to all of them. Go ahead and click that give them your information, and then apply to your products. After your account gets established, you're going to be brought to a page that looks like this, and you're going to be given the option to install which of their tools they have offered. And again, we want PyCharm because we're going to be programming Python. So go ahead and click that. Give you the option to download it. Click Download Now. Choose the correct version. And then again, we want the professional version if you're a student. Don't worry about this fact that it says free trial down here. Um, you'll be given the option once PyCharm is started up to provide your activation key or your license number, and that will allow you to continue using it past the time limit. But if you don't want to provide your information uh, to JetBrains, what you can do is you can download the community version. It's free. It has slightly fewer features, but it has everything that we need in order to do the programming for this class. So choose which one you want, and then go ahead and download it. So our Python has been finished and it's downloaded right now. Make sure you do this one first before you go ahead and install PyCharm. And I've already downloaded PyCharm to save us a little bit of time. So go ahead and click on the installer. Uh, give it access to everything that you own. The place to install it. And then what we're going to make sure to do is create the appropriate launcher, which uh, appropriate launcher if you want one on your desktop. I have a 64-bit machine. So I want the 64-bit launcher. You also want to make sure to create your .py associations. This is going to allow PyCharm to recognize Python files that end in .py and open them up. And then we're also going to want to download and install this JRE x86 by JetBrains. It'll just make things work a little bit smoother. Go ahead and hit next. Get a place to save it at. And then let everything download. After everything has downloaded and been set up, you're pretty much good and ready to go to start programming. So that's it for this lesson. Next time in the next video, we're going to talk about how to work with the interpreter to write some simple basic code inside of it 
and see it run as we type it. So I will see you guys next time.